So what causes your metabolism to slow down during long-term fasts, during calorie restriction? Well, hormones change, leptin and ghrelin change. During prolonged fast, your body undergoes changes in the appetite suppressing hormone called leptin and the appetite stimulating hormone called ghrelin. Leptin is a hormone that's produced by fat cells and helps regulate metabolism and hunger. Kind of tells you when you're full. When calorie intake is restricted, leptin levels go down and that tells your body that energy stores are low. Now, this is a good thing for people who have a common condition called leptin resistance, which is when you basically have too much food and your leptin levels go up and up and it's, you become resistant to the effects of leptin. And when you do fasting, it actually makes your leptin sensitivity better. So you're not resistant to its effects, which makes you feel full. And then that stimulates the body's ability to regulate your appetite more naturally. It also improves insulin sensitivity and leads to weight loss. Now, in the long term, in non-obese individuals, when you fast too long, it can result in a slowdown of your metabolic rate. And that means you're going to try to conserve energy because your body thinks you're starving. Well, ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone, will initially increase during fasting, making you feel hungry. Its job is to stimulate appetite and food-seeking behavior, which is a good thing. When you're hungry, you're going to go looking for food. Now, during longer fasts, more than a few days, then ghrelin levels start to decrease. And studies examining three-day fasts have found that 24-hour mean ghrelin levels actually declined over the fasting period. In other words, you know, a lot of people who are fasting report a decreased hunger as you continue to fast. So you might be hungry the first few days, and then after a while, you're not hungry. Now, when you're less hungry, you eat less, and the body then adapts by slowing down your metabolism. Now, another thing happens when you fast too long. Your thyroid doesn't work out so good. A slower metabolism is in large part related to your thyroid hormone levels. See, thyroid is the master control center of your metabolism. When you undergo long-term fast or calorie restriction for longer periods of time, it actually lowers your thyroid hormone production and therefore your resting metabolic rate, meaning you burn less calories just sitting around. T3 is the active thyroid hormone, and it plays a really important role in regulating your metabolism. During longer fasts, the body aims to conserve energy, and the way it does that, it reduces the production of the active thyroid hormone called T3, so you don't burn as many calories. That slows your metabolism, and your body can conserve energy and become more efficient at using those fewer calories. Now, this is good when we didn't have a lot of food around and we conserved energy and it was sort of built in to protect us from food scarcity, but we don't have that anymore. Now, as your metabolism starts to slow down, the body becomes resistant to weight loss. And then it makes it harder to continue losing weight without further reducing calories. You get kind of a plateau. Now, of course, if you're you know, not eating at all, uh, your body's going to continue to waste and you'll starve and die. But if you calorie restrict, initially you'll lose weight, but then you hit a plateau. Now, it's a survival mechanism. It's going to help your body conserve energy in times of scarcity. Now, short-term fasting is good because it doesn't result in a slow metabolism. It does the opposite. It actually boosts your metabolism. So what's short-term fasting? Well, there are many different types of short-term fasts. A few of the main ones include what we call intermittent fasting. Now, that's an umbrella term for various fasting schedules where you alternate between periods of eating and fasting. Uh, there's a lot of different methods out there. There's something called the 16-8 method, which is 16 hours of fasting and eight hours of eating. So let's say you eat between, let's say, eight in the morning and four in the afternoon, right? And then you're done. Uh, and then you take the next 16 hours off and you go to bed and you sleep and you wake up and you eat. There's something called the 5-2 method, which is eating normally for five days and dramatically reducing your calories for two days. Or there's alternate day fasting, or you can do even shorter fasts like 12 to 14 hours. Now, intermittent fasting focuses on, on more extended fasting periods, which may include skipping meals or limiting calorie intake for whole days. But I, I think the better way to think about this is what I call time-restricted eating. And it's a specific form of intermittent fasting that emphasizes eating all your daily meals within a consistent window of time, like eight hours, 10 hours, and fasting for the rest of the day, like 14 to 16 hours. Unlike other forms of intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating focuses more on aligning eating with the body's natural circadian rhythms and ensures all meals are consumed within a set time from each day. You can do 12-12 fasting, 12-hour feeding window where all your calories are consumed followed by a 12-hour fasting period where food intake is restricted. So basically you would be fasting after dinner from 8 p.m. to 8, 8 a.m. the next morning. I mean, everybody could probably do a 14-hour fast. Basically, you eat dinner, you finish at 
let's say six o'clock, that means you can eat breakfast at eight o'clock the next morning. If you love that last video, you're gonna love the next one. Check it out here.